hey friends welcome back to my channel uh, in this quick azure devops series uh, we will be deploying a python flask sample application uh, we'll be deploying this via our azure devops pipelines we will have ci cd uh, uh, as well so but but the only catch is we will be using the classic uh, release pipeline uh, for this video of uh, the next video we will be using the yaml one which is the you know the new way of uh, uh, deploying your azure devops pipelines so yeah let's get started uh, we have got an azure app service and we have created a python uh, you know website in that like web app and we will be deploying our sam sample app into our azure app service uh, website so uh, if you have used it before it will be easier so let's uh, yeah let's keep, uh, let's dive into it so this is my uh, azure app you know uh, azure web app uh, which sits on azure app service plan uh, which is linux and this is my application settings and if i show you my general settings that's just a uh, you know python stack uh, minor version 3.11 so this is where we will be uh, deploying our flask sample application so this is the sample application that i have it's a very basic hello world kind of an application nothing much uh, it has got the requirements uh, you don't need pandas in this but I, i've just you know uh, just yeah just for the sake of having it uh, to show that you can do whatever you want uh, via the pipelines so let's configure the build pipeline build will be using this uh, yaml based pipeline and the release would be the classic one so uh, let me select my subscription and so we are doing the python to linux web app on azure uh, it has recognized itself and it gives you you know a few options to do it so uh, let me just log into my subscription give it my web app name valid it and it should configure uh, you know, it uh, should generate me a YAML for the build and deployment both. But we will be just using it for build. For deployment, we will be using the release pipeline, the classic one. Uh, in our next video, we will be deploying via the YAML pipeline as well. So let's review our YAML. Uh, if you see, the first part is trigger main. So whenever there would be a push or you know a merge in your main uh, this pipeline would get triggered if you look at my variables the azure service connection uh, that's the connection that uh, is used to connect to your uh, azure subscription you can always create a service connection yourself and provide that the web, web app name the environment name the python version the stages uh, the stage first stage is the build stage and in that, you, if you see my script, I create a virtual environment, then I activate it, then I run my pip install, upgrade pip, and then I do pip install setup, and then I pip install the requirements.txt that we have uh, provided in our application. Uh, then we uh, publish our, you know, uh, instead of upload, we should use the publish, but if you see uh, the, the YAML that Azure DevOps generated for us is a bit old. Uh, now uh, it uploads the package, uh, drops it into a location, and then the deploy uh, stage uh, picks that up and deploys it. So if you see the package, it, it uses as a zip deploy. And that's it. So it has got both a uh, build and deploy stage. What I'm going to do is I will remove the deploy stage from this and uh, we will just save it for later use this is a very you know a basic skeleton kind of uh, pipeline and it, it does the job and it's really good uh, you can add environments you can have approvals and everything so let me just quickly remove the deploy and if you see the moment i committed so uh, as I'm not using any feature branches in this, uh, I committed directly to main and it triggered my build pipeline. So build has started. Uh, it first check, uh, it does the checkout to your uh, repository. Then it 
checks the version of your Python, installs your uh, like the version that you need, uh, then you install your requirements .txt, and then it archives the files. Then we upload the package, which will be used. So if you see the job preparation parameters, there is one artifact that was produced by this build. And that artifact will be used to deploy in our Azure App Service. Not Azure App Service, but Azure Web App. This is your uh, related uh, one published artifact. That's a zip file. And this will get, uh, we'll be deploying this particular zip file into our uh, Azure Web App. Okay, so let's go back to our pipelines. Uh, in our, this was our build. Let's go to releases. There is currently no release pipelines. So let's create a new one. This is the classic UI based. Let's select an empty job. Let's give it a name. If you see the stage owner, you can always change that. Let's give it a, you know, deploy. You can use a stage or of your environment name like deploy dev or something. Uh, add an artifact. So the artifact that was created on our build pipeline, we will be, you know, use uh, like uh, pointing it to that and it will use that. Uh, these are uh, in, in the UI, you will see this uh, trigger kind of, you know, some uh, icons which will tell you whether you want to have a continuous deployment and continuous, uh, I mean, sorry, continuous deploy deployment and approvals before uh, the deployment stage. So this is just a, a pre-deployment condition here. You can specify approvals if you want someone to approve your deployment before you go ahead and you know uh, make any changes in your application. So that's it. Our uh, we'll first bit is the agent job, and then we will add a Azure App Service deploy task. So that's your Azure App Service deploy. Let me add that. And the subscription. So this is uh, the service connection that we have. The service connection has permissions on our Azure subscription. App service type is Linux. App service name. Yeah. This is actually not app service name, but the web app name. There's a bit of confusion with the names here. App service plan is uh, the actual, uh, uh, how would I say, the hosting. Uh, it's kind of a sharing shared environment within a VM where you can have multiple websites. So let's start our first release. And release one has been created. If we go to our release, it, uh, yeah, you will see that it is asking for an approval. So if you uh, you have if you are the one who was added in your approval gate you would receive an email so you give a comment and you can approve this can be anyone uh, other release manager or or someone who the team lead or anyone and the deploy is in progress so once this deployment is done our uh, sample web app uh, should be deployed in the Azure app service and uh, it should be live Let's just wait for it. Now, if I go and check my release logs, uh, let me go ahead on the pipeline. You would see the pre-deployment approval was completed and the next agent job is in progress. So got service connection details from Azure App Service and package deployment using zip deploy initiated. 
So once this completes, our application should be live in the Azure App Service. Let me fast forward this bit. So if you see now, uh, we can see the message successfully deployed web package to app service. Successfully updated app service. And so our release pipeline has completed successfully. If I go to my deploy task, you will see the URL. And if I click the URL, it should route me to our application. So the URL is working and you can see the message. This is just a demo of Plask. And yeah, so our application has been successfully deployed uh, using our Azure DevOps pipeline. We used the build uh, via YAML and the release pipeline was the classic one, the UI based. Uh, I'm not sure how when but Microsoft probably will be uh, deprecating the classic UI based uh, pipelines uh, they have also started rolling out you know the settings where you can disable them so yeah so let's make a quick change uh, to our uh, message that we have in our application so for example if you are working in a team and you're collaborating you create a feature branch you make the changes so if you're if it's a trunk based development then you just have a you know feature branch from the main you make the changes whatever you want you whatever feature you want to add and once that is done you just publish your branch so we have just added a new message so we'll deploy this new change into our web application once uh, we have pushed the feature branch it should ask for us to create a pull request let's go to our repos you can see uh, you updated feature 01 just now let me create the PR you can add your team lead or whoever you know reviews your code and if you have any work items that is related to this feature you can link that you can have tags and yeah once once it is approved you complete your merge you can either I mean, the best practice is to delete your feature branches so it is short-lived and you never have a uh, merge conflicts in future so any long uh, last you know long living branches should be avoided so if you see uh, the moment it got merged into main our build pipeline was triggered so this is ci which is continuous integration so the whenever you push changes and you merge into your main branch there will be a build uh, you know build pipeline uh, will get triggered so our build pipeline is in progress and once the build completes because we have you know uh, enabled the continuous deployment trigger uh, it will start the continuous deployment as in the release pipeline as well so you don't need to do anything just the approvals uh, approval gates whatever you have configured uh, those people need to just uh, you know approve the changes or you just review the code and uh, confirm whether it is good for deployment and that, that that's how the entire CICD process will work and having this approval gates is very important so that you don't break your production so basically first of all you will be deploying into dev and then do to a pre-prod UAT something and then to the prod and it's it's good to have a uh, these kind of approval gates in our production and pre-production environments so the build is complete and this should trigger the release and if you see the release 2 has been triggered which is the continuous deployment and it is currently pending approval so whoever is your release manager or, re or the team lead will go ahead and approve this let's go ahead and approve our deployment once approved it should kick the agent job which is our main you know deployment task 
So depending on your parallel jobs in your organization, uh, if you have like queues, that means you are not having enough parallel jobs. Uh, like So yeah, you need to work on that one. You might need to purchase some more. But for me, it's all right. Uh, so our continuous deployment is in progress. package deployment using zip deploy initiated let's fast forward this as well and we have successfully deployed so the changes should be visible now let me go ahead and go back to our yeah so if you see the deployment center in your uh, uh, the logs in your deployment center you, you will see uh, deployed successfully let's refresh to see our changes if you see uh, that this is a new feature that that's just one you know a uh, statement that i added so yeah this is how you deploy a, a python fast app ap uh, application into azure app service uh, this is very simple and i think one of the best uh, you know uh, paths that i have seen to deploy your applications you can have like you don't have to manage a lot it, it's everything is inbuilt you get some uh, access restrictions you get you get the uh, you know uh, all those features that you look for uh, the front door and all those things you can even use the managed identities and for your uh, permissions uh, for the key vault uh, and getting secrets and permissions into azure databases so it's it's a very good very powerful uh, pass uh, platform as a service from azure and I would definitely recommend this if you want to host some applications, uh, web apps, or, or be it a, even APIs can be hosted in it. So yeah, it's it's a very powerful pass that I've uh, seen and I've been using it in my company as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and keep supporting. Uh, in our next video, we will be doing the same deployment via the YAML deploy task. So yeah, stay tuned and keep watching.